are the Roman Empire. Historians have debated for centuries when exactly the Roman Empire ended and who its final emperor was. And as you'll soon see, the list isn't as short as you'd imagine. Theodosius I is our earliest candidate. He was the last emperor to rule the Roman Empire in its entirety before its permanent split into eastern and western halves. The problem here is that, to the citizens of the empire at the time, this would have seemed like business as usual. The empire had been split between multiple emperors quite a few times in the preceding centuries. So in 395, nothing would have seemed out of the ordinary. It is only with the benefit of hindsight that we know that no future emperor would ever succeed in reuniting the empire. <sighs> the empire must be reunited. <sighs> Now, as we all know, the western part of the empire collapsed not long after this split. The last western Roman emperor who held any real power in Italy was deposed in 476 by the Germans. And that is where, sorry, and that is where the story is usually said to end. However, the eastern half of the empire carried along just fine after the west fell, and sure, the people there spoke predominantly Greek rather than Latin, but they still considered themselves Romans and called their polity the Roman Empire. The emperors in the east continued speaking Latin as their native tongue for another century, and for a brief time, they even reclaimed Rome from the barbarians. Nevertheless, the Greekness of the Eastern Empire put off historians enough for them to give it a different name. The Byzantine Empire, a term that's popular today, but which its contemporary inhabitants never used. From their point of view, they lived in the Roman Empire, which had continuously existed through an unbroken chain of emperors stretching all the way back to Augustus. The Eastern Empire would survive various calamities over the next thousand years, including the rise of Islam, only, in a great twist of irony, to be brutally dismembered by the Crusaders, who decided that fighting the Muslims wouldn't be as profitable as sacking Constantinople. You can argue that the Roman Emperor at the time, Alexius V, was the last real Roman Emperor. The empire virtually ceased to exist for close to 60 years, with only three fractured polities remaining under Greek control during this time. One of them did manage to reclaim Constantinople in 1261, and historians tend to consider this a restoration of the Eastern Roman Empire, even though it never fully recovered the lands of the other two. Overall, it was all downhill from the Fourth Crusade onwards. The Turks would continue eating up the empire, and in 1453, they finally succeeded in capturing Constantinople. The reigning emperor, Constantine XI, was slain defending the city, and, conveniently, he had no children, so he's the one historians generally consider to be the last Roman emperor. He did, however, have a brother, Thomas who continued ruling territory in Greece for another seven years, until the Ottomans got around to conquering it. He and his family fled to Rome, and for the rest of his life, which amounted to only five years, sadly, Thomas tried to convince the Pope to organize a crusade to restore the Eastern Empire. Quite the irony, I know. He even married his daughter to the despot of Serbia, hoping to recruit him for the upcoming crusade. But then the Ottomans conquered Serbia, and the whole idea fell apart. When he died in 1465, his claim of being Roman Emperor went to his eldest son, Andreas, who continued trying to organize a campaign against the Ottomans. By 1475, however, Andreas had run out of money, and so he resorted to selling his title to the highest bidder. Indeed, he shopped it around to anyone who would listen, including, but not limited to, the King of Naples, the Duke of Milan, the fashionista he was, the Duke of Burgundy, marvelous color, the King of France, and of course, the King of England. Unfortunately, no one took Andreas up on his offer, and in the end, he died childless and penniless. In his will, he granted his title of Roman Emperor to the monarchs of Spain, who were completely unaware of this and never bothered to make any use of this generous donation. Perhaps the most amusing part of this story is that Andreas' younger brother, who, mind you, had no titles to sell, lived out a much more successful life. He went back to Constantinople, offered to fight for the Sultan, and ended up with an estate, a pension, and two wives, if you don't mind. 
one can only imagine Augustus rolling in his crypt. Yeah. In any case, since we here at SideQuest are not fond of dying miserable and broke on the streets of Rome like Andreas, I humbly ask you to consider supporting us on Patreon. While I can't guarantee that we'll launch the reconquest of Constantinople any time soon, I can promise you that we'll continue exploring the wonderful side quests of world history. In the meantime, you can of course also like and share this video with your friends and loved ones, and any potential claimants to the imperial title will handle them quietly and discreetly, don't worry. And don't forget to return here in a couple of weeks for the next triumphantly hegemonic episode of SideQuest. Because when in Rome, darling, do what the Romans do.